And brothers and sisters, just a few announcements as we get started for today. Two weeks from today, we're going to have a combined service here at 9 a.m. that is going to be focused on missions. I'm very excited about this and the opportunity to hear about the different mission programs that we have going on that are connected to our church. Um, a lot of us don't realize how many different ways we are involved in missions here at Mount Calvary. And so really want to encourage you to make sure you're here that Sunday, and we're going to learn a lot about some of the great ministries here at our church. We are having a combined baby shower. Hopefully you saw that. It's also on August the 7th <coughs> for um, a young lady who goes to our second service. Her name is Amanda Billington, and for Ashley Housen, who you may not be aware is pregnant, and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, so that's on August 7th at noon, so um, everyone's invited for that. And thanks to Ashley for filling in today for Barb, who's away on vacation. Uh, VBS is still coming. We're up to 65 kids that have registered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And uh, it's going to be, but it's going to be a great time and a great week. And uh, next Sunday is the last Sunday to get shampoo in for our LifePoint Food Pantry uh, collection. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Yes, Donna. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So next Sunday at 7 p.m. at Mount Gretna. All right, the info will be on the bulletin board out in the narthex. And pray for Donna and all those rehearsing. They're going to be doing so today in the afternoon where it might be slightly warm. So we want to just keep them in prayer as well. Any other announcements? Seeing none, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, just thank you this morning for the chance to be in your presence. And God, may all we do this morning through singing, through praying, through our speaking, through all that occurs, may it be for your glory as we seek to show our faithfulness to you, O Lord. Thank you for the abundance of blessings that we can celebrate today. And may we honor you for the different ways that you impact our lives. We pray these things in your name, Jesus, and all of God's children said, amen.
Amen. Thank you, Ashley. Let us stand together now as we join in our opening hymn this morning, number 451, Be Thou My Vision. Amen. You may be seated. And I'd like to invite the children forward for a time of sharing this morning. There are very few kiddos. That's okay. That happens sometimes during the summer. So how are you four kids doing today? You're good. Are you good, Ava? Are you good, Henry? I regret this. <laughs> okay, cool. Very good answer. Very good answer. All right. So <clears throat> can someone tell me what this is? Yes, Henry. It is a salt shaker. Very, very good. Where do you usually find a salt shaker? cafes, restaurants, sometimes at home when we don't hide the salt shaker. That's true. <laughs> we won't call out your brother here today. But, <laughs> so you usually find these on a table, right? This is typically where we find a salt shaker is on a table. We see them at home, at restaurants, even places that have the cheapest food tend to have salt shakers on their table. We expect it. But let me ask you something. Is this usually alone on the table? Ava, is there usually something with the salt shaker that you can think of? What is it? The pepper shaker. Very good. Fun fact about Pastor Jim, my very first word was pepper. Ask my mother. It's true. I don't know why. For some reason, it was pepper. So, it was peppa. Peppa. Like peppa pig. So... So typically, you would also have a pepper shaker, too. They complement each other, and they make foods taste so much better when they work together. And usually, they're in similar jars or containers, right? You don't usually see a salt shaker in one big thing and a pepper in one little thing. They're usually very similar, the containers that they are in. Well, <coughs> do they taste the same? No. Salt and pepper do not taste the same. They taste very different. Do they look the same? No, they don't look the same at all. And yet, they work so well together. 
And that's a lot like what friendship is like. We all don't look the same, we aren't the same shape, but we all can work together and learn what it means to be friends. People can have a number of differences, but in spite of those differences, they can find a common ground and share in good times and bad. Today in church, I'm going to tell a story about a man with kind of a funny name. Now, a few weeks ago, I told you a story about a woman named Dorcas. Now, that one is probably the funniest name that you're going to hear. Yes. But today, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell a story about a guy named Ittai the Gittite. Okay? Does that sound like a silly name? Ittai the Gittite? Well, Ittai was a man who lived thousands of years ago, and he was friends with a king named David. And one day, King David had to run away from his home, but Ittai decided to go with him, even though it was very, very dangerous. Why? Because he was David's friend. And eventually, he helped to run David's army and helped David to have victory in battle. Ittai and David were very different people. One was a king and one was far from a king. And yet they were able to come together and accomplish very good things. It's interesting, salt and pepper can take a bland, boring meal and turn it into something delicious. And true friends can take a bad situation and turn it into something wonderful. You'll never find salt without pepper. And like salt and pepper, true friends are the ones that'll stick up with you no matter where you are and what situations you face. You don't have to be exactly alike or have everything in common. You just have to be willing to be there. So <coughs> let's fold our hands, bow our heads, <coughs> and say our prayer. God, I love you, and I know you love me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kiddos, you can come get your lollipop. No, you weren't. All right, good. Because then she couldn't hear me, buddy. All right, good. We all don't have to pray loudly. There's actually a Bible passage about that. One, my son. There you go. Watch the microphone. This way, Henry. All right. All righty, guys. We now come to the time of sharing in our prayer requests and our praises to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I want to invite you to keep Dean Gutschall in your prayers. For the next few weeks, he is going to be get, receiving treatments for leukemia, and so he cannot be here with us, though he certainly wishes he could be for sure. Are there other prayers or praises to lift up this morning? Yes, Lois. <laughs> yes, it was Tracy's birthday. Happy birthday to you. And Jake was doing this, so apparently you're 11. So <laughs> happy birthday, Tracy. Other prayers or praises to lift up this morning? Oh, I'm sorry, Ashley. Yes. Friday. Yeah. So prayers for Ashley's uncle who had a mild stroke, but definitely want to continue to keep him in prayer. Amanda. Oh, yes, yes. I forgot. Uh, the toughest lady in the church is back with us, Nancy Wass. And so we're praising God. Uh, Nancy was in a mild car accident this week, to say the least, and we're and then I went to visit her in the hospital, and her vital signs were better than mine. And so we're praising God that you are okay, Nancy, that his protective spirit was with you, and we are grateful that you can be in church with us this Sunday, that's for sure. Absolutely. Amen. If you couldn't hear Nancy, she said she left New Jersey, but she was not alone because God was with her. So we're Absolutely, we're praising God that you are okay, Nancy, and continue to keep you in prayer for soreness and things that are still recovering. Any others to lift up this morning? <coughs> I ask you to keep my family in prayer after the second service today. We're driving out to Pittsburgh to spend a few days with Amanda's family, and I uh, hope to have a nice uh, 
little trip out there, and prayerfully the temperature will drop a little bit <laughs> over the next few days. But with that said, let us turn now to our hymn of prayer, the first verse of Nearer My God to Thee. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, indeed this day we are grateful for your protection, especially in those unexpected and dangerous moments, God. We praise you for those those moments in which you just, you do something miraculous for which we are grateful, Jesus. We lift up to you all of those, though, today that are hurting or in pain and need of comfort, whether it be physically, emotionally, or spiritually. God, we are also grateful for all of the graces and celebrations we have, for folks that are expecting new life, for friends that are, bringing a, that are celebrating birthdays, for healings, O oh Lord, <clears throat> and for the amazing different ways that you do indeed bring us comfort. Lord, as we sang that song, Nearer My God to Thee, I'm reminded that that is also the, the, Navy, the Navy anthem. And so, God, we are also grateful for the United States military personnel and their families, veterans, civil servants, and all those that allow us to be able to worship freely today. Thank you, God, for the abundance of love and grace that you bless us with as we pray these things in your name. And all of God's children said, amen. This morning, our special music is Ashley House. change things up a little bit. Most of you have always seen me play piano. I will go anywhere, 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 just 
just to see your face and I I don't know if you saw Quinn was standing there all jumping and clapping for you there. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. At this time, I'd like to invite Lynn Trojak forward with our scripture reading. <coughs> Good morning. Today our reading is from um, 2 Samuel 15, 15, excuse me, 17 to 22. So the king set out with all the people following him, and they halted at the edge of the city. All his men marched past him, along with all the Keratites and the Palatites, and all the 600 Geatites who had accompanied him from Gath marched before the king. The king said to Etai and Geatite, excuse me, Etai the Geatite, why should you come along with us? Go back and stay with the king Absalom. You are a foreigner, an exile from your homeland. You came only yesterday, and today shall I make and today shall I make you wander about with us when I do not know where I am going. Go back and take your people with you. May the Lord show you kindness and faithfulness. But Etai replied to the king, as surely as the Lord lives, and as my Lord the King lives, wherever my Lord the King may be, whether it means life or death, there will your servant be. David said to Etai, go ahead, march on. So Etai the Geatite marched on with all of his men and the families that were with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. And together we say, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you, Lynn. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, on this day, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, may these be your words, O God, not mine. Amen. As we've been going through this sermon series on bib biblical characters you've never heard of, I'm aware that in a lot of situations, folks Jabez, even being familiar with the name Dorcas, a number of folks shared with me, they were interested in what I was going to say about that. Today, though, I feel pretty strongly, pretty strongly that most of you in here before today never heard the name It Tie the Get Tight. Pretty confident. Just out of interest, had anybody in here heard about It Tied to Get Tight? Diana Reed. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's one. So there you go. There you go. But most of us in here are not familiar with It Tied. I said Diana Reed. Diana Reynolds. God, it's been over a year. Sorry. <laughs> but It Tied is an interesting story because he 
is only mentioned for these few verses here that are found in the book of 2 Samuel. And the book of 2 Samuel tends to have to do with King David more than anybody else. Ittai is from a town called Gath. And Gath may not sound too familiar, but there is somebody that you have heard of who is from the town of Gath. And that person's name is Goliath. Now, how many of you have heard of Goliath? Good. We've done something right here over the years. We at least got Goliath in. So, Goliath is famous for having his battle with David, and David slew Goliath. Here in this case, we have a man named Ittai from Goliath's town, and yet he is here to serve David. It's an interesting situation. And what happened is, during David's time as a warrior and as a king, he ended up in the town of Gath, and there were 600 men who chose to follow him and become this sort of mercenary army for David. At the time, we didn't know any of their names, but now we know that one of them was, and apparently the leader of the army, was this man named Ittai. And so <clears throat> it's, very, it's very unique, and it's very ironic that of all the places for David to have this individual who seemingly is so loyal to him, it'd be from the town where he had defeated, from, where he had defeated his greatest foe, or where he was from at the very least. But the situation with Ittai it's more important than just where he's from. It's the choice that he makes. When this story is being, that was read to us is occurring, King David is in one of the most difficult situations that he faces during his time on the throne. His son Absalom has decided to take the throne, and he has really succeeded at this point. He's gathered up a lot of folks, a lot of folks in the towns and the communities surrounding Jerusalem to turn against David, and David is actually fleeing from Absalom as this story occurs. And so he sees this man named Ittai standing there, and he says to him, look, you just got here recently. You're not even from this area. Most of the folks that you know don't even like me. You don't have to follow me. Go serve King Absalom. And that's where Ittai shares the most important words that he does in all the scriptures. He says, as surely as the Lord lives and my Lord the King lives, wherever my Lord the King may be, whether it means life or death, there will your servant be. And David accepts that offer. It's incredible the amount of loyalty that Ittai has to David. But it also begs the question for us. Ittai is loyal to David as king, but what is our relationship with Jesus like in comparison to it ties with David? Does our relationship with God show the same kind of loyalty, the same kind of faithfulness, the same kind of courage that it tie displays in this passage? And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning, what it means to serve Christ the way that it tie, the Gittite, was willing to serve David. And so the first thing that we need to recognize is that serving Christ takes faithfulness. You see the words that Ittai shares there. Nothing's going to stop him from serving David. And in this moment, David discovers who his true friends are. You know, it's easy for folks to love David when he has power, when he has control, when he's the king. It's easy for people to serve him then. It's easy for people to honor him then. But what happens when times get tough. Ittai's words at the very beginning here, as surely as the Lord lives and as my Lord the King lives, indicate to us that nothing is going to stop Ittai from choosing to follow David. And though he doesn't mention God too much, we do see that he begins with as surely as the Lord lives. And when he speaks of the Lord, he doesn't speak of the Lord of the God that the people that Goliath lived with would have believed in. He speaks of the one true God, our God, the same God that David serves. Because of Ittai's faithfulness, David actually takes things to another level with him. And the scriptures tell us that he makes Ittai one of the three commanders of his army. In 2 Samuel 18, 2, we read, David sent out his troops, a third under the command of Joab, a third under Joab's brother Abishai, son of Zer Zeruai, uh, he's dead, it doesn't matter, and a third under Ittai the Gittite. 
So this man who is from a foreign land, who represents the people that David so famously defeated here, becomes a leader of one-third of David's army when it matters most. For Ittai, it doesn't matter that his life has been uprooted. In fact, he seemingly gains nothing by following David. He could have stayed and followed King Absalom and had everything, especially for showing that he set David aside. But true friendship, true relationships, and true faithfulness are not defined by what we gain. Ittai is loyal to David even when it costs him something. Are we faithful to Christ in the same way? Today, we know that in the story of Christ, the moment that Jesus seemed to be powerless, the disciples fled. They ran away. They realized it might cost them something, their very lives, if they stuck around with Jesus. And it was only after the resurrection that they returned. Today, we don't have a physical form of Christ to guide us, hold us, and keep us accountable to our ways. And so it could be easy to miss the power of Christ that is present in our lives right here at this very moment. Is our loyalty to Christ determined by when things are going well, when people are nice to us? Is it determined by when life is good or by when things are their easiest? Would that be true loyalty? If the comforts of our life determine our willingness to serve Jesus, then it's not Christ that we serve, but rather our comforts. And that's why we need to understand, church, that serving Christ takes courage. In the words of Ittai, he says, whether it means life or death. He recognizes that this could be it for him. But that doesn't stop him from making a courageous choice. <clears throat> David is literally fleeing the kingdom. They are at the doors trying to get out of town. He's surely going to be pursued by this new popular king, his own son. His life is at a greater risk than at any other point that he was king. And it's likely that those that are loyal to David will perish as well. And yet, what comes from this man named Ittai is courage. A courage that sets an example for what we are meant to be when it comes to our relationship with God. In 2 Timothy 3.12, the Apostle Paul tells us, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. We don't like to talk about that part of things, Especially for when folks are new to the church or coming to the church or even when we're having a bad time. We don't want to talk about the fact that the more faithful we are to God, the more likely we are to be attacked. Because Satan hates a successful Christian. Satan hates a faithful Christian. Satan hates a loyal Christian. And so he'll do whatever he can to try and disrupt the momentum that Christians gain. And the reality is that if we think ourselves outside the bounds of being persecuted, let's, remind, let's remember of what's on the wall back there. If Jesus himself could face death, we cannot consider ourselves so much greater to not be in the same kind of situation. But at the end of the day, if we really understand what this life is all about, which is to serve Jesus and not for our own comforts, then we need not worry about what it is we may lose. In Matthew 16, 26, Jesus says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? Brothers and sisters, we need to recognize <coughs> that there is a cost of discipleship. There is a cost of choosing to follow Jesus. And that, yes, it takes a choice of courage if we are going to truly turn our hearts over to him and serve him in a world that is becoming more corrupt by secular, secularism day by day. And interestingly, in the story of Ittai, when he is named with two others to command David's army, later on, when those that are still in command are named, Ittai's name is no longer mentioned. Joab and Abishai are but not Ittai. Did Ittai just stop being important? Maybe. Did he just leave after the battle? Possibly. 
Or maybe just maybe he didn't make it out of the battle. And his commitment to David was actually fulfilled. His life was given in service and in faithfulness and in courage. And the truth is, serving Christ is not always easy, but that does not stop us from following him. If we are truly seeking to serve, we'll often be put into uncomfortable situations. Even having conversations with people about faith can make us uncomfortable. So we're taught from a young age, you don't talk about politics or religion. Well, a lot of us are okay talking about politics these days, so I don't see why we can't start talking about our faith, which is a whole lot more important than politics will ever be. It's not easy. And, and at the same time, we have to recognize that some will even be called into life-threatening situations. We hear about that with missionaries overseas all the time. But is anything truly life-threatening when we have the promise of eternal life before us? This life lasts, at best, a hundred years for most of us. It's nothing compared to the eternal life and eons and ages that we receive when we choose to follow Jesus and accept him into our life. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And Jesus did that when he defeated death on that great day that we call Easter morning. When resurrection occurred and we learned that we ourselves will one day be resurrected to the kingdom of heaven if we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And because of that today, we can make the choice to serve him no matter what we may face. As the book of Philippians tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But it takes courage and intentional courage. It takes faithfulness and intentional faithfulness to honor God. But serving Christ also takes loyalty. And that's really been the key word for today. For me, Ittai re reflects this idea of loyalty when he says the word wherever. Wherever my Lord the King may be. There's no qualifier there. There's no wherever, unless it's, you know, in the Philistine country, because I don't really like that, because they don't really like me anymore. He doesn't say wherever, except for after, like, dark, because I get a little bit nervous when the sun goes down. It's not wherever, except I don't really have a lot of money right now, so, like, I'm not really sure if there's much that I can do. We can always come up with excuses, but God calls us to be loyal, to serve, to love, and to have courage wherever it is it may be. There's no limits to Ittai's willingness to serve and choose to be loyal to the king, and there must be no limits to, for us to serve and choose to be loyal to our king, the true king, Jesus of Nazareth. This past week, I was reading an article. Amazingly, there are articles written about Ittai the Gittite. I'm going to be so sad when I can't say that name anymore. I just like saying Ittai the Gittite. But I read an article. It's one of those things where I was like, I could try and put this in my own words, but all I'd be doing is just kind of defeating the purpose of what I read. And so I want to share with you something that I read this week. It's from a, um, a blog called EnduringWord.com. It said this, Ittai showed his loyalty when David was down. Therefore, when the cause of Jesus seems weak or faltering in any way, all the more loyalty is required of us. Ittai showed his loyalty decisively. Therefore, our loyalty to Jesus should be wholehearted. Ittai showed his loyalty voluntarily. Therefore, we should not wait for someone to make us be loyal. We should quickly volunteer for this duty. Ittai showed his loyalty having newly come to David. Therefore, we should not think that this kind of loyalty is only for those who have followed Jesus for years and years and years. Ittai showed loyalty publicly. Therefore, our secret loyalty to Jesus is not loyalty at all. And lastly, Ittai showed his loyalty knowing that the fate of David became his fate. Where David ended up, so would Ittai. Therefore, when we give this kind of loyalty to Jesus, we are assured that we will share in his glory. Like Ittai was towards David, we must determine that wherever Jesus is, we will also be. 
He lives in the heavenlies, and so we also will be with him there. He is with his church, and so also we will be. He is busy in his work, so also must we be. He is with children, and so also must we be. And we will be friends indeed to our King Jesus if we do these things. And so church, today, when you go from this place, may you do so with a heart seeking what it means to truly be loyal, to honor, to be faithful, and to have courage in your service to Jesus. May we all examine our own hearts and choose to break the walls of sin and doubt that hinder us from serving Christ fully and completely. Today, church, we heard about someone that barely is mentioned in the scriptures, and yet their faithfulness, their courage, their loyalty set an example for how we are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ today so that we may make more disciples and so that we may transform this world. Today, church, let's be a little bit more like Ittai the Gittite. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have left in the scriptures so many amazing stories about individuals that are just there for a blink. It's so easy to turn the page and then just ignore or miss or dismiss one name here or there in the midst of millions of others, seemingly. And yet, God, each name is there for a purpose, just like each of us are here for a purpose today, Lord. You used Ittai in order to bring about transformation in David's army to lead and to maybe even give his life. Lord, I don't know what you have in mind for me or for everyone in here today, but I pray that we would open our hearts to how it is and who it is that you call us to be, O oh Lord, that we might serve you faithfully and completely with loyalty and indeed with courage. When those moments of persecution come, God, help us to set them aside. Help us to fight through knowing that when your spirit is with us, there is nothing, nothing, nothing that we cannot overcome, O oh Lord. And so, Jesus, today, may we choose you in a new way, with a new heart, and with a new purpose. And in honor of your Son, we join together now in praying the prayer he taught his disciples to pray in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <coughs> thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, at this time I'd like to invite you to stand as we join together in the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue to remain standing as we join in our closing hymn this morning, In Christ Alone.
And I invite you to go this day in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, having the faith, the courage, and the loyalty to serve Jesus like Ittai the Gittite. Go in peace and serve the Lord, and remember that God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen.